Hi, and really to sort of check on the um, technology stack at ZP, I'm actually going to do a, the measurement of, I don't want to say an old favourite, but something that's kind of quite familiar to us at ZP, or at FoodSense, I should say, and that's actually measuring um, the hotness of a um, product called De Bomb. This features quite a lot on hot wings. I believe it's like third from last that they get people to eat, though actually now the evidence is building that this is actually one of the most intense if not the most intense in terms of scoville heat units um sample so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to measure the hotness of this i'm just going to um pour a little bit out here um which i have essentially done right I, I just might do it i kind of think of myself put some gloves on um, you feel like, you know, because, because it's a kind of a sauce, oh yeah, it's fine, but actually, no, it's it can be quite painful if you get it on the wrong parts of you and if you rub your eyes, etc. So maybe I should have, I generally say you should actually put gloves on. And with that said, I'm going to dive in and do a um, quick demo. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is, um, I'll just put a sensor in here. I will grab 100 microliters of the bomb. The bomb is quite viscous, but if you... Um, draw it up slowly if you draw it up slowly then you can get um, quite a bit of it so let me just grab um, a right so I've got my um, de bomb which I will put essentially there. I will grab um, a clean syringe, oh, sorry, not syringe, a pipette tip, and I'm just gonna do a one in 10 dilution. One, two, three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine. Okay, right. So that's a one in ten dilution. I'm just going to close that. Close that off. I've actually got a vortex uh, uh, just here. I'll just bring that into shot just for one second. These are not super expensive um, pieces of kit, but they will allow you to shake, vibrate a sample much more than you could ever do by hand. So I can see my sample here now. If you've ever watched any of the videos of this channel, you'll know that actually uh, one in 10 dilution will not be adequate in order to be able to test the capsaicin in um, something like the bomb. The reason being is capsaicin is actually not terribly soluble. So, but the app is quite smart and the app will guide us into the right, um, right concentration. I'm just gonna put in the bomb here. Um, the bomb. 101 that's a bomb 101 yeah okay um all right and i'll put 10 here it's just names that i can basically find this data later on um so don't be super surprised now when i hit um when i go on this one it may actually prompt me to do a further dilution in fact i'll absolutely bet that it'll prompt me to do another dilution so i'll just grab the sample really quickly i put it on there i'll hit um continue um, I'll make sure I choose one in 10, which I've done, start measurement. And then what you'll notice in a minute is it'll start grabbing the data, it'll do a, and then when it does that flat line there, that's the first indicator that in fact, this sample is too intense and I will have to do a further um, dilution on it. What I'm actually gonna do is whilst it's doing that, um, I'm actually gonna grab, um, it says upload complete, um, too high, dilute more. It's actually sent the data to the cloud, but I'm going to be quick. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab um, 100 microliters of this sample, which I have just done. I will put it into a um, tube, which I have now just done. I'll put a clean pipette tip on. And then I'm going to dilute this um, with um, the buffer. One, two, 
three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right, okay. So that's really gone from what we call a one in 10 dilution, which is the original sample, to actually one in 100 dilution. So I've got my new here. I'm just going to go to this vortex and just vortex it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. All right, I'm doing this quicker than maybe I would do if I was kind of doing a more sort of, um, uh, sort, of uh, sort of more analytical approach to this. But as it is, I'm really just trying to demonstrate um, the overall, let's say, workflow of this system. So what I'll do now is... Um, Put a clean sensor in. You do not need to do this serial dilutions, by the way. You should be able to have a sense of actually where you're at. If you're trying to make a hot source, then you know one in ten is never going to be enough dilution. You can just go straight to one in one hundred. And I've got the sample here. I'm just going to name it up actually in the app real quick. Um, I just want to. I just want to change one of the words here to from ten to effectively 100, which I will do, because that will help me just remember that that was the, um, that was the one in 100 sample. So I will take this, I will now take this out. Right, so I've done that. I'm hit, gonna hit continue. Um, I'll make sure I choose one in, one in 100, which I will do. I'll go start measurement and essentially off it goes. I can see that that peak has decreased in intensity, but I can still see it's quite intense. Um, but we'll see what the app says when it's finished. I might even start thinking about, so it says too high, dilute more. Okay, so we did one in 10, one in 100. I'll take that sensor out. I will flick onto a new sensor, um, which I have done. All right, I will grab 100 microliters of that one in 100. I'll make sure that I'm using clean pipette tips every time to stop, stop this, not stop, but yeah, prevent uh, cross contamination. So I will take my one in um, 100 dilution. I'll take 100 microliters of it, which I have done. Done that. I'm just going to grab a clean pipette tip. I will take um, nine of these. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so I've done the, I've done the, I've done the, um, the dilution. So now I'm at not one in ten, not one in one hundred, but actually one in one thousand. I'll just vortex it again. The vortexing is it, it becomes less important the more dilution really because it's all become very kind of homogenous at this point. And um, the sample is now was that a clean sensor? And it does look like a clean sensor to be fair. So what I'm going to now do is I'm going to take 50 microliters out with a clean pipette out of my 1 in 1000. So clean pipette. I'll take 50 microliters out of this tube. Just before I do that, I'll go done here. I'm just going to change this to say 1 in 1000. So that will help me identify data later on if I need to go back and look for that data. So I'll take that out. This is 50 microliters, 50 microliters goes onto the sensor, which I have done. I'll put that down there. The label is labeled up, I'll go continuous. I must just, if I ever make a mistake, I apologize. I'm just gonna make sure I do click the one in 1000. So I go start and essentially off I go. So I can see the peaks, they are less intense now um, because effectively we've actually done a one in 1000 dilution and then it will progress, progress, progress. 
perfect, to be frank with you. Um, so we've got a score of 148,000 Scoville heat units. Now, there's a real scientific story to all of this, and I'll show you that um, scientific story now. So I'll just go to my... Every time I did that test, it said um, upload complete. So let me just go to um, into my data. I'm just going to do a quick refresh. I did a series of dilutions there. You don't have to be so pedantic in the way I went from 1 to 10, 1 to 100, 1 to 1,000. You can just skip that. But it was just to kind of um, demonstrate to you the sort of strategy. So here's the bomb. Um, this is 1 in one, t one in 10. Don't forget the app told me it was too intense. But I can see the intensity here. You know, it's really flatlined there. But the app did tell me. So you didn't need to necessarily know that. But if you're the quality manager at the bomb or at somewhere else, you know, you kind of, you, you do want to get a sense of, you know, what, what's going on here. Um, and I can see again, this is 1 in 100, but it's still flatlined, still, you know, intense peaks, it's all good. But it did tell me, no, you need to do another further dilution. So then we did the 1 in 1,000 and um, um, 1 in 1,000. And then you can see now that we've got the kind of peak. It's picked it up nicely. It says that that's about... If I just round that up, that's 148,000 Scoville heat units. In fact, which, what it also says on my phone. So let me just share that with you here. Um, whoops, Daisy, well, it's gone to there. But 148,000, or maybe it's easier to see here as well. 148,000 um, Scoville heat units. So just note that I did actually do a lot of pipette changing to make sure that I didn't get um, cross-contamination. So I'll just share the final screen with you now. Um, and just kind of say, all right, I did that because um, we do check that, you know, everything is stable and the systems are good, you know. And so testing something that is um, kind of well characterized by us, at least, um, is good. It's kind of interesting, actually, because they do say on the side of the bottle, I mean, I can even show it to you, um, 135 Scoville heat units. But just FYI, we've measured this in the past. It's also been, there's quite a big U, um, video at the moment um, on YouTube as well, where they actually they measured it and they actually found it was more intense than 135,000 Scoville heat units as well. And we've measured it quite a few times as well. So we, we will find it between like 148,000 and something like 190,000. You've got to understand that depending on the bottle, depending on the batch, um, it can come back with different Scoville heat units, but we've never actually found it as low as 135,000 Scoville heat units, which is what it says on the side of the bottle. Um, I think if you Google around on this, and hot wings, they kind of put it as number three from the end, but in fact, I think it might be the most intense of the hot sauces that they actually use on hot wings. But if you've got any questions about testing hot sauces um, with the Scoville heat unit, uh, sorry, with the Food Sense Generation 4, um, don't hesitate to contact us. Okay, thanks very much.